All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is Carol Ricks. For those of you that don't know me or this is your first time on an uh, online event with me, thank you for joining. Um, I own a Cruise Ponders franchise, and I absolutely love what I do. Um, I am grateful for amazing vendors and partners that uh, help in travel, and Ama Waterways is one of my favorite companies. Um, I think that Gathering here and doing an online event is a fun way to start planning your vacation. We're seeing a ton of um, a ton of people are ready. They're ready to travel and a lot of bookings for 2021 and even to uh, 2022. As you can imagine, it was supposed to cruise this year, has moved their, uh, you know, their trip and rescheduled until next year. And uh, with COVID and having to keep the numbers low on capacity, uh, things are really selling out. Uh, 2022 is looking pretty good too. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's good. We're, it's a time that we, you know, we need to learn how to coexist with, coexist with COVID and be able to return and, and travel the world and do the bucket list items that we have. Um, I haven't personally been to uh, Egypt, but it definitely is on my bucket list. Brandon and I were just at that. So um, what an incredible country and a lot of amazing things to see. So um, uh, I think one of the best things about Alma Waterways or, or one of the things that I can um, feel from Alma Waterways is they really try to have um, their guests have a personalized experience when they're uh, sailing the rivers with them. They um, are all about that, making sure that you have an incredible vacation that will be uh, memorable for your whole life. And I'm honored to have um, as my, our guest tonight, Brandon Oscarson with Alma Waterways, and he's going to share with us this new itinerary um, on the Nile River that they're going to open in the fall of next year. So I'll go ahead and turn over the time to Brandon. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you for putting this together and thank you all for joining us. It's great to have you here. And uh, I love talking about this itinerary. It doesn't start until next year, uh, but it, it, it has a lot of popularity. People are booking it like crazy. And something that is not part of this webinar, but I'm gonna share with everybody. Uh, we are the only US-based company that had a boat in operation in Europe this year. So we're in a really good position as far as safety protocols go, uh, because everyone else is figuring out what they're going to do when they start selling. We have been practicing uh, protocols for COVID-19 since uh, the first week of July, uh, up until just about a week ago, we took that ship uh, off the waters and we're actually moving her on a big giant freighter down to the Rhone River. So she's cruising from the North Sea down around uh, into uh, Southern France and we'll get her on the Rhone River. But we are here to talk about Egypt. And again, I'm really excited to share this with everybody. Uh, this is a new and exciting itinerary that we just uh, put together and the ship is being built as we speak. So the, the full itinerary is not just a seven night cruise. When you choose to do this, you are going to be with us for at least 11 nights because we start off with three nights in Cairo, then we do your seven night cruise and we finish off with one night in Cairo. This part of the world, there is just too much to see to try and squeeze it all into seven nights. So we put a really beautiful itinerary together for you. And because of the weather in this part of the world, we don't sell, we're not going to be selling during the summer months. It's just too hot. Uh, my, my wife grew up in Israel. She's uh, familiar with being in the Middle East and it is very, very hot in the summer months. So the first selling begins September of next year. And I think some of that is why we have so much popularity right now. People feel very comfortable booking something for fall of next year or into 22. But as you can see by the months here, we'll cruise September through December and then 22, we'll pick it right back up in January and cruise through May. Uh, June, July, and August, that ship will be refurbished each and every year. And your itinerary will start in the stunningly beautiful city of Cairo. It's funny because I know that when you think of Cairo, you don't think of something that looks like this. Uh, it is a, a very, very busy city. It is actually the second capital of Egypt, Alexandria being the first. And uh, Cairo actually comes from an Arabic word uh, that means conqueror. Uh, and uh, there's 22 million people in Cairo. Wow. Now, I had mentioned that Amidali is being built. So I, I, I love what they're doing here in Egypt because they are monitoring how many vessels are on the river. They wouldn't let us build a brand new ship and just drop it out there. We purchased a ship 
that uh, was a 68 stateroom vessel. We have stripped it down to the hull, right down to the bare metal and are rebuilding a brand new ship. It will only have 34 staterooms. Just some specs here. And for more details on these specs, uh, definitely reach out to Carol. She is very up to speed with how we're working and she has flyers and all kinds of good stuff that she can send your way. And now these are all mock-up images. Actually, uh, I just got brand new uh, designs uh, last week uh, that are going to be, uh, this is pretty much what the ship is going to look like for the most part. Uh, obviously, once it all comes to fruition, little things might change, but this is what we're looking at. Beautiful, beautiful sun deck with the pool. And I know you can't really tell from this angle, but those lawn chairs are actually inside the pool. There's going to be a big step. So if you want to lay out in the pool on a lawn chair, you can absolutely do that. Uh, a nice look at our reception area. This is where you will check in. Uh, and this is where you will come every time you're getting ready to go on excursions or leave the ship, you'll check with the people at the front desk. Uh, they're warm and they're wonderful. Uh, just like all of our ships around the world, we always bring the most amazing people on board so that you have a true uh, AMA experience. And just so you know, it's funny. Uh, so I'm gonna bring this up really quickly. I've heard AMA pronounced a lot of different ways. I've heard AMA, AMA, and uh, well, that's it. <laughs> AMA. AMA, AMA, people say yeah. AMA. Yeah. <laughs> so it is derived from the Latin word uh, amare, which is like amore, uh, for love. So uh, AMA actually means love. And that really does kind of uh, explain how we operate and uh, the, the feel you have when you're on board. It's really incredible. A nice little sneak peek of what our lobby is going to look like right next to the reception area and the main lounge. So in my opinion, the main lounge is one of the most important places on the ship because when you're not on excursions and you're not dining, nobody hangs out in their staterooms. Everybody goes up into the main lounge. This is where you go to have a drink. This is where you go for your cocktail reception or your cruise manager meetings or your evening entertainment or just to socialize with the other guests on board. But I will say the most important place on the entire ship is absolutely the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. uh, Well-fed guests are very happy guests and we have absolutely incredible cuisine on board. You will have a regionally inspired and Western cuisine while you're on board. And we do that because a lot of times most people want to have the cuisine from the areas that they are traveling through. But sometimes uh, maybe there's something you're not interested in, or maybe you just want something that's a little more close to home. So there's always going to be steak, fish, chicken, uh, different types, even vegetarian options, things so that if you want to dial it back and do something different, you can absolutely do that. And we are actually uh, going to be shipping all of our food uh, from Europe, except for uh, local spices and things like that. We'll always bring some local things as well. Just to kind of give you an idea of what your stateroom is going to look like. Obviously, there's going to be different categories, different sizes. But this just gives you an idea of the decor. And the way that all of our ships work is you can either have two separate twin size beds or we can have an oversized queen bed in your stateroom. I know in the mock-up, they've got those twins smashed together, but uh, the way that all of our ships work, we take one of those little nightstands and just put it in between so that you have a little extra space between you and the guests you're traveling with, if you need the, yeah. the twin beds. <laughs> now, this trip does start with your three nights in Cairo. We are staying at the Four Seasons. The, the gentleman who put this together, who works in our corporate office, such a great guy. He was telling me that he calls this tranquility in a city of chaos. And it's because Cairo is such a busy city where the Four Seasons is situated. So it's a little southeast of town and it's just a very quiet and beautiful place. All of our rooms are the superior rooms. They're going to be up uh, higher up uh, there at the hotel and they're going to give you partial views of the Nile. And uh, to Here's one of the rooms. This is what you're going to be staying in. Absolutely beautiful accommodations. And the way I look at it, everywhere that we go, uh, where it's more of an exotic destination, we use these beautiful five-star luxury hotels because one, you love to go and explore these cultures and, and see uh, how the different people live. But when you lay your head down at night, you really want the comforts that you have at home. And we make sure that you have that while you're here. 
Now, your first day when you arrive, we don't have anything planned because other people are coming. It just doesn't make sense to put tours together. And also, it's kind of have nice to have a day to acclimate. And, and for me, I find whenever I land somewhere, I'm really excited. I, it doesn't matter how jet lagged I am. I want to hit the ground running and get out into town and do something. Well, you're in a great place where you can do that. Now, if you feel like taking it easy and relaxing at the hotel, you have a pool with a stunning view of the Nile right there. This hotel has six different restaurants within it as well. So maybe you feel like taking it easy. You don't want to run around too much. You have everything you need at your fingertips right here. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, right? It looks spectacular. <laughs> the following day, this is when your tours start. Uh, we're going to go to the um, Egyptian Museum uh, and King Tut's Treasures uh, in Cairo. Now, from what I understand, and I'll, I'll, I did the, this webinar with an Egyptologist two weeks ago, and he was telling me that this museum will probably be closed when you head over there because they've been working on a bigger, uh, more grand museum that will absolutely be open by next year. So everything in this museum is going to be moved over there. And there are over 120,000 artifacts in this museum wow. alone. I can't even imagine what they're going to do with the new museum, but it's going to be, again, a larger and more beautiful museum that's already in place. Uh, and this has uh, some of the greatest and richest artifacts that have ever been unearthed anywhere, uh, including King Tut's death mask uh, made of solid gold. It was actually just discovered in 1922. Really? Not that long ago. It's funny when you think about some of these, and when I, I'll tell you some of the dates on some of these places, it's really surprising it, uh, that, it, you know, things that happened in the 19th century really weren't that long ago, considering, yeah. you know, how beautiful and big some of these places are. Now, this is one of these places that really excites me. You get to go to the Khan El Kalali Market. It's a bazaar. Been around since the 10th century. Now, when I was in Jerusalem, I went to a market just like this. There's so many amazing little things that you're not going to find anywhere except for a place just like this. Yeah. So absolutely come prepared uh, to bring some souvenirs and gifts home for your friends and family. But we're doing something really special and unique here. We are going to take you to the world's first public coffee shop. It opened up in 1760, long, long, long before Starbucks was ever dreamed of. Uh, so the reason we take you here, it's actually considered to be the nicest restaurant in town as well. So uh, one, you get to go to the bazaar and explore and do some shopping and learn about the culture of the people that you're, you're exploring through and you get to have an incredible dining experience and you can come back and tell your friends and family you went to literally the very first coffee shop that ever opened. I get excited about coffee. My wife and I are coffee fanatics. We have uh, like four different coffee makers, espresso makers, <laughs> percolators. Uh, yeah, I get a little excited about coffee. <laughs> Now, obviously, you cannot go to this part of the world without going to the Pyramids of Giza. Uh, made out of limestone and granite, uh, this was actually the, the largest structure in the world until about the 14th century. Uh, the largest one here uh, it has over two and a half million stones. Now, there are tombs underneath, but they're very, very narrow, and, and, and not everybody wants to go into them. However, we, we don't schedule a tour to go explore the tombs, but you can absolutely pay $20 to go in and explore. Uh, I'll tell you that, it, again, it is very tight and narrow. Uh, some of the areas you have to kind of back up to get out. You have to kind of hunch down and squeeze to get in. Wow. Very, very small people <laughs> in the pyramid, surprisingly, if you think of how big and heavy everything is. Now, uh, something again that we don't organize, but it's there and we will point you in the right direction, camel rides. And the reason we don't do anything with animals and things like that, uh, uh, PETA has come to us in the past and just asked us to be mindful and, and we respect that. 
But uh, again, uh, being in the Middle East, I, I went and had my picture taken with the camel. I went on a camel ride. Uh, from what I understand, it's uh, 15 to $20. They give you a 15 minute ride on the camel. You get to take some pictures with them with the pyramids in the background. So if that's something you wanna do, again, uh, it's not something organized by us, but our tour guides are so amazing and they want you to have the experience that you came for and they're absolutely gonna help make sure that that happens. Now, something else that we're going to do, since we're right here, we are going to see the Sphinx, the head of a pharaoh and body of a lion. This was actually built in 2500 BC. This was carved out of one single stone, and it actually took two, three years to carve. Now, I don't remember all the details from the Egyptologist. It was really neat doing this with them because I got a mini education. I don't yeah. remember my history that well from high school. A little too <laughs> old from that. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, I think he was saying that Napoleon and his troops were the ones who shot the nose and the ears of this sphinx. Wow. Target practice. Wow. Now we do something else really neat when you are done exploring the Sphinx and the pyramids. Uh, we're we're going to take you for lunch at the Mena House. Uh, this was built uh, in the 1800s. This was for hunters that came over from Europe. It was an old hunting lodge. Everything is still in its original st state. It is stunningly beautiful. You get a wonderful lunch here, and then you have the rest of the day uh, for yourself to explore. Uh, you probably want to head back to the hotel and get a good night's rest, because the next morning we're going to take a short flight, which is included with the trip, down to Luxor, uh, which is where you're going to embark on the ship. Uh, Luxor is a city of 500,000. And again, this is where you board the Amidalia. And Luxor is really considered to be the world's greatest open air museum. So after you board the ship, uh, you're going to have a nice lunch, and then you'll go and visit the Luxor Temple, built by uh, Ramses II. And now that I'm talking about tours and excursions, uh, I should bring to your attention the way that, if you've been on a cruise with us, typically you have a lot of choices of tours at every single place you stop and different tour guides at each location. Well, Egypt is a very special place. We bring three Egyptologists, and since there are only 68 guests maximum on board, you are okay. split into three different groups. You each have your own individual, your, your, your <laughs> Egyptologist for your group that you stay with yeah. from the beginning to the end. So uh, I had this same experience in Vietnam and Cambodia, uh, same Cambodian guides the entire time and same Vietnamese guys the entire time. I actually really like that because the, again, we're working with the warmest, friendliest people you could meet and you get to develop that relationship and kind of learn about their experiences exploring and visiting these places as well. I butcher this every time I say it. I've heard it's supposed to sound like hot chef <laughs> suit, hot chef yeah, suit. <laughs> something like that. So this, this queen um, is one of the strongest, well, considered to be one of the strongest leaders of Egypt. Uh, as a matter of fact, she was uh, such a strong personality, also physically strong. A lot of the statues you see around here of her either have her with the, the body of like a, a very strong man or she has facial hair like a beard and a mustache. Uh, she was Egypt's most successful pharaoh and first female ruler. She actually ruled for 20 years. Uh, so we're going to visit her temple right here. Now, something that we do exclusively on the waterways, and again, this Egyptologist verified, nobody else does it because of the cost to get in. We include it with your cruise. And it is one of the most beautiful tombs you will see anywhere in Egypt. Uh, we go to visit uh, the Nefertari's tomb. So Nefertari was the first queen of King Ramses. Uh, she was 13 when they married. He was 15. She was also the most beautiful, the most well-educated, and actually she was his favorite of all of his wives. And the, the paintings in this tomb uh, are so vibrant. The colors are so incredible that uh, I have heard that the paint looks like it is still wet if you were to reach up and touch it. Obviously, you cannot touch wow. anything yeah. <laughs> go inside of here, uh, but again, it looks like wet paint. Um, <clears throat> so the, the paintings on the tomb walls depict Nefertari's journey after death into the afterlife. 
uh, guided by various guardians and spirits, deities. Uh, this tomb was unearthed in 1904 and became very, very famous. Now, the, the, the really special thing about this tomb, besides how beautiful it is, uh, King Ramses lived long after Nefertari had passed away. <clears throat> uh, so he put a lot, everything in here is his personal touch. Uh, some of his personal art, stories, uh, poems, things to dedicate his love to Nefertari. We also go to the Temple of Horus, uh, built around 200 BC. This was just discovered in 1860. It is the second largest temple in Egypt. Uh, and the walls actually display very compelling details about the religion and language of the country's Greco-Roman period. Wow. It's interesting for me. So <clears throat> when you go to Europe, every single stop, there, there's usually a cathedral. So it's a lot of cathedrals. When you are cruising down the Nile River, it is going to be temples and tombs, temples and tombs. So every stop is temples and tombs. Uh, we do a <laughs> couple of things here to break that up and uh, give you some unique experiences. Now, uh, again, another stunningly beautiful picture of the Nile. Um, and here we have another beautiful picture, I'll tell you. So uh, on the Nile River, you're going to find that all of the temples are on the east side of the river because that's where the sun rises and it represents life. And all of the tombs are on the west side of the river where the sun sets and it represents death for them. Now, uh, during your trip with us, uh, you're going to go on a felucca, which is a traditional Egyptian sailboat. We're going to go to a, a very colorful and beautiful Nubian village of Hesse. Uh, the Nubian region is actually one of the oldest civilizations in Africa, dating back at least 4,500 plus years ago. Uh, and the Nubian, again, similar to our Native Americans, they are literally the, the oldest culture uh, in all of Egypt uh, right here, actually in all of Africa. Um, and they are very well known for their archery skills. And the drawings on their homes are, are stories of their families. Now, the Nubians are also known as great archers, and uh, they have incredible skills, uh, and they provided military strength for Nubian rulers in the past as well. Now, again, we're going to do something really special and unique here, and, and, and I've had all of this confirmed. Nobody else does what we're doing. Most people stop and visit, and then they move along. We take you here, and then we go to a, a local place for you to dine. Uh, which gives you that interaction with the people who live here. And you also get a wonderful dining experience. And after that, you have some free time to shop, look at the spice markets, look at some of the really neat things that you're not going to find uh, pretty much anywhere else right here. Again, a beautiful and amazing experience. Now, the morning uh, that we go to the Nubian village, we do have an optional tour. I will tell you, if you're going to this part of the world, you absolutely want to do this. Uh, we go to visit Abu Simbel. So uh, we do an early morning flight to Lake Nasser. Uh, this is where you, you go to see, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's over 3,000 years old, dedicated to Ramses II. Uh, now, this was all down along the Nile River. Uh, when, they, when they put the dam up for Lake Nasser, they had to take this and move it 600 feet up a hill so that they could protect it from going underwater. I'm sorry, it wasn't along the Nile. It was along Lake Nasser, but they had to move it up, up of 600 feet. So wow. they piece by piece. It is an incredible feat. Now, something that we are doing that nobody else is doing right now, we are guaranteeing if you book this before you leave, like through our reservations department, that you will get to go. And nobody can guarantee that you can actually get there. Uh, now, if you wait till the last minute and you decide while you're on board, you know what, I changed my mind, I really wanna go, there's no guarantee we can get you there. But if we pre-book it uh, the way our operations works, we can absolutely make that happen. Great. Now, something really neat about Abu Simbel, uh, um, in the center, uh, all these tunnels point to uh, statues of different gods, deities, and in the center of all of them is King Ramses. On February 22nd and October 22nd, the sun shines right through and into the middle and shines directly onto King Ramses. Nobody else. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? He thought very yeah. hard of himself too, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. 
All right, so we are going to cruise to the great temple of Kom Ambo. Uh, this is where you have soaring columns that rise dramatically above the Nile River. Uh, this is unique to Egypt. This temple is dedicated to the crocodile dog, god, Sobek, and it's also dedicated to the falcon god, uh, Heroes. Now, something neat about this is there are mummified crocodiles all around this particular temple. Uh, there are, you're not going to see crocodiles in the Nile River. Uh, everywhere that we're cruising, they've pretty much uh, been fished or taken out over thousands of years. Uh, but uh, once upon a time, they were everywhere in the Nile. And that's why there's the crocodile god, for one. And that's, again, why there's also mummified crocodiles all, all around this particular temple. Crazy. Another stop along the way, a temple. <laughs> uh, Karnak is the largest of all of the temples you're going to see while we're going through Egypt. It is actually the largest in Egypt. It covers 250 acres. Uh, built 2,000 years ago, over the course of 1,300 years. Uh, absolutely overwhelming undertaking. Over 80,000 laborers took part in creating this temple. Um, Despite its rich history, the temple actually lay hidden until the 19th century. Uh, the, the effort to restore it is still ongoing at this time. Again, it takes over a very, very large amount of space. Uh, temple of Hathor uh, is actually the best preserved temple along the Nile. And now this was built with sacred pools, like uh, these areas uh, of gravel. These used to be giant sacred pools, and even the pharaohs weren't allowed to get into these pools. They were considered to be more for, for the gods. Uh, they're filled with gra gravel now, obviously no longer in use, uh, but Hathor uh, is dedicated to the goddess of love. Now, as I have mentioned before, we try to do certain things to break up what you're doing and give you some unique experiences. Uh, one of the, as you, your last day, that you're with us. Uh, we're going to go to the Presidential Palace in Cairo. This is actually considered to be one of the most beautiful palaces in all uh, the world. It is absolutely breathtaking here. Now, uh, this consists of multiple museums. They have a Silver Museum, Arms Museum, Royal Family Museum. It is still the official resident uh, and workplace for the President of wow. Egypt. So we take you for exploring the museums, but we also take you to dine here. Again, no one else is doing this. We're just trying to give you some, some more incredible experiences while you're cruising with us. And again, as part of your last day uh, with us here in Egypt, uh, we're gonna go to Old Cairo. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's been around since the 10th century. What we can't see off to the left uh, would be the pyramids of Egypt. Uh, we need the, I mean, the pyramids <laughs> of Giza yeah. uh, would be over there to the left. Now, this particular trip uh, has its pre and post that are built into it. We do have some options that you can tack onto the beginning and end. We actually have two separate pre options that you can do. Uh, the first one, we do offer three nights in Dubai. Uh, we stay. Nope, I'm sorry, here's Dubai right here. I was looking at the hotel on one side and the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the Dubai itself on the other side. Uh, we are going to stay at the JW Marriott. Again, we want you to have those uh, comforts of home when you lay down to go to bed at night. And, and as always, we're gonna put you in those rooms that are high up so that you get these stunningly beautiful views while you're here. Uh, now, you're also gonna go on a desert safari in a four by four. Uh, you get to experience the, the customs of the desert. And uh, something that's even more exciting than the dead than that to me, eating is always more exciting. I don't know what it is about that for me. <laughs> uh, you get to have an evening in the sand dunes where you're going to dine there. Now, I have been advised that if it's a little too warm that we'll go somewhere else for this. But this is uh, one of the experiences that you absolutely uh, want to have while you're over there. And then you get to visit the Zayed Grand Mosque. This is the biggest one in the country, uh, and it's known for its grand chandeliers. It has more than 80 marble domes on the roof, and uh, they're held up by a 
thousand different pillars. It's a masterpiece of uh, modern Islamic mo culture, architecture. Uh, more than 90,000 tons of pure white marble uh, from Macedonia were used to construct this spectacular mosque. Now uh, we go uh, during the middle of the week because if you go on a Saturday, it is impossible to get in. There are thousands yeah. of people there to worship. Yeah. We do have an alternative pre option. We do offer free nights pre in Jordan. Uh, this looks really exciting for me, but that's because Jordan is very, very high up on my list of places to go. Uh, we are staying at the St. Regis Amman. Again, beautiful accommodations, very, very comfortable for our guests. Amman is one of the oldest cities in the world. They actually have statues around town that date back over 7,000 years. It's really hard to wrap your head around what was happening 7,000 years ago. Now, if you're planning on doing these pre and post options with us, uh, visas are obtained when you arrive right there at the airport. We help take care of that. Uh, obviously, yes, you can pre take care of it if you would like to, but it is not necessary. And getting visas can, can be a little extra work. So, but I'll let Carol help you with that if you decide you want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we also go to Jarash. This dates back over 6,500 years. It's actually considered to be one of the best examples of Roman influence in the Middle East, anything outside of Italy, really. And it's funny because you can always see where the Romans leave their mark. It's a Colosseum. Yeah. They leave Colosseums yeah. all over the place. All right? over. Yeah. This is definitely on my bucket list. Yes, there we go. Well, if, if I go back to Israel next April, I will be going here as well. Petra. Yeah. I, I think this is like the main reason a lot of people go to Jordan is uh, Petra is a, a big bucket list item. Uh, we, we, we visit Petra. It is absolutely incredibly impressive. Uh, they have aqueducts that brought water down from the mountains so they could survive in this extremely dry climate they lived in. It's carved out of one single stone. Uh, they're still unearthing parts of it now as, as we speak. Uh, now, wow. you can think, I'm sorry? I, wow, it's, it's just right? unbelievable. Like, how did they do that? <laughs> no idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you can either walk down. It's a decent hike. Uh, or you can actually ride in a donkey cart, which is included. You don't have to pay anything extra for it. We just include that if you want to take the donkey cart. So as I had mentioned before, typically we stay in five-star resorts. This is a, a four-star, but we chose it because everyone who stays here absolutely loves it. But more specifically, this is owned by local villagers. Uh, this, so we are supporting their local yeah. economy. And again, I have spoken to many people actually, surprisingly, more people than I ever thought I would speak to about this who have stayed here. And they all said it was very comfortable. And the stone walls and the sto stone arches there help keep your room nice and cool at night. Oh, I bet. And then when you get finished with your cruise and your post with us, there is an optional four night post to, uh, to Israel. Uh, we are going to go to Jerusalem. Uh, I will tell you that the two favorite places I have ever been in my entire life, one is Israel, the other is Cambodia. They're just spectacular countries. Israel is, is a very special place. And I partially say that because my wife is Israeli, but I mostly say it because I just love the country. I love the culture and it is such a beautiful place. And the history here is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, right here, we are looking at the Welling Wall. You will absolutely get to go and visit there. Uh, when we are in Jerusalem, we do stay at the Waldorf Astoria. Again, we want you to have those uh, wonderful comforts that you would find at home when you lay your head down at night in the evenings. Now, one of the trips that we're gonna take while you're here, we're going to go and visit Mount Masada. Now, if you're looking here off to the back and the, the left, that is the Dead Sea. So when you are at the Mount Masada, you are at the lowest point on earth that is not underwater. Uh, it, uh, it's kind of like being here in Arizona. <laughs> it is very dry, very warm. Uh, when I was there in uh, April, it was very, very warm. It was like a, you know spring here in Arizona. Yeah. I so have a daughter. I have a daughter that lived in Israel with her husband for four years while he was doing his master's and uh, their apartment did not have AC. Yep. So it was, it was very hot for him, but they loved it. Absolutely loved it. 
It's a really neat place. I told my yeah. wife I would live there for at some point, and, and she said, I've lived there before. I don't want to live there again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Mount Masada has a really unique history. Obviously, the Romans took over everything everywhere, and when they came to Mount Masada, and I apologize, I don't remember the name of the king, that uh, he, he basically had a little a home away from home. It was a resort um, built at the top of the mountain here. When the Romans came, the, the, the Jews said, no, we're not coming down. We're, we're not going to surrender. It took the Romans seven months to get to the top. And if you're looking off to the right of the hill, there's a lot of dirt that's kind of coming up at a slant. That's because the Romans moved all of that earth so that they could get their big equipment on it and push it up to block the arrows coming at them. And then they took over. But sadly, uh, when they when they went in, uh, nobody wanted to be taken as slaves. Uh, so uh, they, they, they all killed themselves. There were a few people that, that they brought out of it. And obviously, if we're going to be that close to the Dead Sea, we have to take you to see the Dead Sea. And something that nobody else is doing, we are going to give you time to get out and float in the Dead Sea. If you're there, you have to do it. It is the, the most odd sensation you can possibly imagine. So the water feels like soft water on steroids. It's like that <laughs> almost like slimy feel, but it's just a salt. It's a lot of salt in the water. Yeah. And all you have to do is lift your leg just a little bit and you are automatically horizontal. <laughs> you have to kind of kick your legs a little and put them back down. But again, yeah. it's one of those really incredible experiences. If you want to bring some mud masks and all that great stuff home, you can find it all right there as well. All right. So to just talk about a couple of things uh, uh, related to AMA Waterways and our relationship with cruise planners, uh, Carol, she has access to unique opportunities uh, that you can only get because she belongs to cruise planners. Uh, like uh, we have several dates for next year where we have complimentary prepaid gratuities that just come with it because you're booking through Carol. Uh, something <clears throat> that I want to offer uh, as part of uh, a thank you for attending the show, I have a 100 per person discount that's good for anybody who makes a booking within the next two weeks. So if you make a booking by December 2nd, uh, you will get a 100 per person discount. Now, something, again, unique that this is only for Carol. You cannot get this from anybody else, uh, and it's good until the end of this month. I have five dates in Europe with two-for-one offers, and these are true two-for-ones off of our brochure rate. Uh, and I have, again, they're all peak season. Best of Holland and Belgium, July 3rd. Captivating Rhine, July 8th. Romantic Danube, one of my favorite itineraries, July 18th. Essence of Burgundy and Provence. Now, uh, you'll be on the Rhone and Sone River. I will tell you the Rhone River is the most beautiful river I've ever cruised in Europe. It is spectacular. Again, peak season date, July 22nd. And then our Melodies of the Danube on August 21st. For the only way you can book this is by calling Carol. She is the only person who can book this for you. So reach out to her if you're interested in going on the Nile River or you would like to take advantage of one of these incredible offers. And ladies and gentlemen, I am going to take your questions at this time if you have them for us. And I'm sorry, uh, you can unmute yourselves. The way I set this up <clears throat> is so that everybody is able to mute and unmute themselves. If you look down on the bottom left of your screen here, you see a little picture of a microphone. All you have to do is click on it and the little mute thing will come off. Um, I have a question while we're waiting. Um, yeah. Are they going to be limiting the capacity to about 50%? In Europe right now, it's mandated at 100 guests. It doesn't matter okay. how big the vessel is. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in Egypt. It is, okay. It's about a year away from actually starting. So yeah. But with, with uh, so few of cabins, you know, they should be okay. I think they'll be okay. And hopefully with the, the I mean, there's a third vaccine that is uh, being yes. spoken about today. So with all these new vaccines coming out, uh, from what the reports in the travel industry are saying that by the end of second quarter next year, most of the world should be pretty much back to normal. Good. All right, well, it doesn't sound like anybody has any questions. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Brandon, to, uh, to join me and to have this event tonight. What an incredible itinerary and my favorite company. So thank you for uh, being my guest tonight and for all the information and the great overview. I really appreciate it. And that's a, a great deal, the two for one. 
That's incredible. Yeah. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Everybody have a wonderful yeah. evening. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.